Okay, guys. Can anyone tell me what this is right here? That's right. This is a piggy bank. This is actually my daughter's piggy bank. And I asked her what this one's name is, and she said flower. Does this look like a flower to you, piggy bank? So this one, if you take it, it has something in there. And if you open it, the bottom of it, maybe you have one of these at your house. There is stuff in there. What is that in there? Money. Do you see that? There are coins in there. There are all different kinds. There's silver ones and copper ones. And if you reach a little further in there, there are dollars. These dollars in our economy is worth more than that copper money or the silver money. But it's all money. Do you know what money is? Money is something that you take maybe to a store or you buy stuff with it. You pay for items or things with it. Now some people get caught up thinking that this stuff right here makes them somebody or makes other people somebody if they have money. That's not what God tells us in the Bible. In fact, did you know that God uses little things in our life to do big things? So maybe the little amount of money that we have, God can use even more than if we had a ton and ton and ton of money. So let's think the way that God wants us to think today. And if you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, and we're going to look at a verse here together. Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 through 32. The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is larger than all the garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. So let's look at this little apple here. Do you see this apple? This apple looks just like a little common apple. Eh, it's not that cool or miraculous or anything. But if you open it up, if you take a knife, and you open it up, and you look inside. Look inside, guys. Oh, there are seeds in this apple. Did you know that this one apple, with the seeds that are in here, there are thousands and millions of apples that could come from this one apple seed and this one apple. Because when you put this little seed into the ground, that little bitty seed doesn't seem like much. You put it in the ground, you put dirt over it and it water, you water it, God waters it, and there's a huge tree that can come up out of it. And there are hundreds and then thousands and thousands and thousands. All these apples can come from just a tiny little seed. Doesn't seem like much. But with God, there are, there's so much more to life than what just meets the eye and what we can see and think about. So when you have a little bit of money, what could you do with that little bit of money? It doesn't seem like much. And there's a word that some people think of when they think of money. When you don't have a whole lot, it's called being poor. Being poor. Being poor with actual physical money. Now, there is true poverty. True poverty and then relative poverty. And we're going to look at that with and think about these two words. True poverty and then relative poverty. Now, true poverty means well, there are some countries, did you know, that there are people that don't have any drinking water and they have no food and they starve because they don't have enough to eat or to drink. And so their bodies get really sick and then they don't have enough to live. That's true poverty, when they don't have anything that they can eat or drink to survive or to live. Now that second word is relative poverty. Now there is relative poverty. When we went to Mexico, our missionary that we stayed with, he showed us that there is relative poverty. Now, there are people that don't have a whole lot, but they do have water and they do have food. But compared to other people, they don't have very much. So when we walk through Mexican streets, a lot of the Mexican people were amazing, precious people. But physical, they didn't have a lot. They really didn't. They had a home. A lot of them had a roof and a lot of them had a floor, but they didn't have a lot of stuff or things. And that is relative poverty. That's when people live in a country, but they don't have as much as other people in that country. So did you know that it doesn't matter? That ultimate poverty is worse than any of that? And do you know what ultimate poverty is? 
Ultimate poverty is when you don't know Jesus as your Savior. So ultimate poverty is a lot worse than the physical. But when we see people that are hurting physically, God wants us. He wants our hearts to be turned to them and to help them out. So we're going to look at Matthew 10, chapter 10, verse 42. Turn your Bibles there if you have your Bibles. 10, verse 42. Are you ready? And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will, be, he will by no means lose his reward. So when you see someone that's thirsty, even if you don't have a whole lot, just like the change in here doesn't seem like a lot, or the seed in the apple, it doesn't seem like it's very big. When you give it to God and you ask God to do whatever he wants with it, he will bless that and make it much more than you ever thought it could be. Remember, we talked about this woman who her husband had passed away and Jesus was watching with his disciples, these people coming into their temple and giving money for the poor. And these people that had a lot of money were giving a lot of money. But Jesus wasn't impressed because he knew that he, they had a lot to give. So it wasn't that much to them to give what they gave because they had a lot of money. Then there was a sweet little old woman who was a widow, and she only had two coins. And she came up to the temple, and she came up to the treasure box, and she put her money in. And Jesus told the disciples, now look, that's the woman who loves me. She didn't have much, but she gave all that she had. So just because you don't have a lot, maybe you just have a few coins. If you see somebody that's in need, if you give them just what you have, out of your heart and love for them, like it says in Matthew 10, if you give it in Jesus' name, even a cup of cold water, somebody. Jesus sees that, and he knows, and he loves that. He thinks that's awesome. So as you go through your life, don't think just because you don't have a whole lot to give that it doesn't mean anything. With Jesus, it's huge. Whatever you have, when you give it out of your heart, when you're a joyful giver, a cheerful giver, and you give out of your heart, like in Proverbs, that's what Jesus loves. He loves to see cheerful givers. So I hope and pray that you guys don't look at people that are poor and think, oh, poor them, and, and not do anything about it. But no, ultimate poverty is 10,000 times worse than physical poverty, but just the little bit that you have that you can give can help somebody out. And that's what Jesus wants us to do is help people out. If you know Jesus as your Savior, you have everything. You have everything. So even if you don't have a lot of materialistic things, that's all right. Because Jesus can use what you have to bless others and for you yourself to be joyful and to be thankful. So I hope and pray that you guys are cheerful givers. And when you give in Jesus' name that you know that Jesus is much bigger than we are. And he can make it into what he wants it to be. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye.